folks, Debbie with Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser here. Today's going to be the conclusion of our four-part plumbing series that we had done earlier. Um, in this video today, we're going to focus on getting filtered fresh water to the galley. So we're going to be, um, we've got the components here to make a fresh water filter. So let's get started. All right, first thing we're going to do is we ordered our, um, we ordered our filters. You can get these off Amazon. I'll put a link down below. But basically, these are canister filters, as you'd probably expect. Take the top off. The filter's replaceable. We like to use a 5 micron um, sediment filter, followed by either a 1 micron or a half micron coconut peel carbon filter block. Um, I really like these, uh, these canisters because they have an interesting feature on them. Once you connect these, you can replace the filter while the water is still on. All you have to do is rotate, rotate this valve at the top and that will bypass the filter so you can then unscrew the canister while the water is still running. So we've got our parts. We've got our canisters, have our brackets, they came with the screws, and a wrench to loosen these up. So we bought two of them, um, and you can actually put as many of these as you really want in series. The nice thing about these is you can locate them wherever you want. They don't have to be under your galley sink. So we're probably going to put these in our engine room um, with the line going up to it. So, we're going to get started. The next part we're going to do here is connecting all of the fittings. So we have our PEX uh, fittings. As you know from the, earlier in the series, we did everything in half-inch PEX, as well as the extra run we did going up to the water filtering system. So we're just going to use some Teflon tape here. We're going to put our Teflon tape on here. And it's important that you want to you want to do this in the direction that it's not going to unwind when you put it in. So you'll notice I'm turning it in this direction so that when I tighten it into the canister I don't run into any issues there. Okay, we're just going to put this on top of here. I usually hold it down with my thumb, pull it a little bit tight as I go and we want to rotate this right around. And you'll notice you want to pull it tight enough so you can see the grooves in the threads. I'm now overlapping my initial spot where I started. I hold it tight there and now it's just time to wrap it. Like I said I like to get about two to maybe three wraps on here. And by two to three wraps, I mean revolutions around the threads. Okay, so once you have your um, Teflon tape on, what we're going to do is we're going to take our bracket and we're going to set it in place. So we'll just hold this here and get this started at least. And again, we want to do finger tight to make sure that we don't cross thread these. So I'm not going to do that very tight at all. I'm just going to turn it now and do the other side. Again, just to get these started. So now that they're in, we're going to go ahead and tighten them up finger tight. And I'm going to keep this at a, a horizontal level because that's the way I'm actually going to be installed. And the nice thing is they have they have these small keyholes back here. So you can put your screw in and then have it drop down onto it. It makes it pretty easy to lift them up. You don't want to tighten these down too much. You just want to go kind of snug um, because it's a brass connection and it's a plastic housing. You don't want to crack it. Camera's getting wet. And given. Given the little raindrops that are coming, we may be going inside to finish this up. Down below we go in a few minutes. But there's one connection, and it's really as simple as um, in and out. The nice thing about this is when, you're when it's time to change the filter, it's really pretty simple. All you do is rotate this handle from the uh, regular position to the bypass position. That now bypasses the water from going through the filter to going up and over it. And then all we need to do is unscrew the canister and drop it down and move it out of the way. You assume this is still mounted to a bulkhead or whatever. Take it out of the way. And, um, and then it's just a matter of taking the filter out. You'll notice these will get brown pretty quick. Don't be too alarmed. Um, as clean as you think your water and your tanks are, they're not. 
All right, and then when you put the new one in, you just want to make sure that you um, you line it up. There's a small little uh, circle down there that lines up with that circle. You put it right on top of that, and then it's the same on the head. You'll do the same thing, just as long as it's centered, you'll be good to go. This is a lot easier to do when it's mounted and you're not trying to hold it. I have a third arm, this will be easy. Just rotate it right on up and just snug by hand. That's all there is to it. Once you screw the canister back on, at this point it'll stay empty or however much water was in it when you uh, when you dropped it. And then it's just a matter of turning this from the bypass position to the regular position. You'll start to see the water fill up and then it'll be filtering again. Uh, anytime you do change the filters, I always recommend you run your water pump for a minute and then run the actual spigot just because you do want to clear out any air that's in the system. We'll be able to show that a little later once it's all installed. We're good to go. I wouldn't you know it yesterday when I was putting the uh, filters together I went and bought um, four of these small uh, three-quarter inch NPT thread to half-inch PEX connectors and I checked the first one made sure it was a good fit and then um, and then I uh, grabbed the next three off the shelf got home and of course one was a female instead of a male so trip back to the store it's a good lesson learned though right if I'm in a remote anchorage doing something like this check every part before you leave. Well, I think I found a spot where I'm going to go ahead and install the filters. Um, it's a little bit to the side of the galley, a little bit down in the salon. I'll show it from a, a different view in a little bit. But I've got my piece of wood cut. Um, this is going to go along a couple of um, vertical beams and the two filters will mount um, right along here. So I'm just going to dry fit it and then I'm going to be painting down here and get everything painted nice and uh, bilge white behind it so that I don't have to do that when I get ready to do the rest of the bilge. Away we go. Alright, so I just have my, uh, my board lined up here. I've got it marked where I want to have the actual mounting holes. And I'm going to go ahead and drill all the way through and then countersink them in a few minutes. And I'm just doing this over a trash can to try and keep my mess down. Um, what I'm also going to do now is countersink a small hole so that my screws sit flush. You just do this by using a much larger bit. Ideally you want one that's just slightly larger than the actual head of the screw that you're going to put in there. I'm moving a little bit bigger than that, but we're going to go ahead and just go really slow here. I'm going to center it down in here. show you what this is like. You can see that. Just enough of a countersink that the screw head will be right down below the surface. It gives it a nice professional look. So now what I'm going to do is just mark where I want these pilot holes so I don't split this or try and do it down into a bill. It'll be a little easier. Just mark where each of them go here and on the other side. And it's just a matter of drilling a pilot hole now. After a few coats of paint in the bilge and also on the extra piece of wood that this mounts on, I went ahead and mounted the piece of wood across the beams right here and then used the techniques from earlier in the project to connect up the PEX lines. Alright, here's the moment of truth. We're going to go ahead and uh, turn on the valve and see if we have any leaking here. We should start seeing the water filling up in the Looks good so far, no drips along here. Right, so that canister is full. Now we'll do the same for this one. We'll just turn on this valve. This is the bypass valve I was mentioning before. I can actually change these filters. All that air out. 
we're doing is just bleeding out all the air that's in the system now. Just about all the air is out now. So Deb and I are big fans of just refilling water bottles. These uh what these stupid square bottles, they fit perfect right in the in the ice box and they can lay down on their sides. So they're good uh, good ice box ones. But now it's just a matter of filling them up. It's nice having uh, fresh filtered water right at the uh, galley sink. Now you can do this as kind of any way you want. You can do a one stage, a two stage, or even a three stage filter. Uh, Deb and I like to do the first stage with a sediment filter at um, 5 microns and then we like to go to a secondary sediment filter that goes down to 1 micron and then <laughs> interestingly enough I actually have a third canister that's just connected to this water spigot the sediment filters connect to all the cold water so while we'll go through filters a little quicker if we drink any water at one of the head sinks, it'll also be uh, just as fresh and clean. This particular one, this spigot here, I have a third canister filter that I mounted inside the uh, galley sink cabinet. And that one is a coconut husk carbon filter block, half micron. And the reason that's important is because when you, when you fill your tanks and you add, um, if you add any bleach to it or chlorine essentially to keep it fresh, the carbon will actually remove that. This is uh, this is actually really clean. It's just air bubbles stuck to the inside of the bottle. There we go. Got some full to put in my uh, ice box fridge. There you go. Fresh filtered water. The nice thing is you can just sort of turn this and put it out of the way if you want. Leave it right there. Fill up the pot when you're cooking, etc. Good stuff. And the worst part of any boat project is putting everything back the way it was because at this point you just want to be done with the job but that to do it As we've gone through this video, I've, I've talked a lot about the different parts we've used. I'm going to go ahead and put links in the description below for where you can obtain them if it makes it a little easier for you. Also, if you find this video useful or entertaining or in any way, shape, or form helpful, please do us a favor. Click the subscribe button. Also, click the thumbs up and the like button down just in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. It really does help us. It just helps raise where we show up in the search engine. So I do, I do really thank you if you'll do that for us. From the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, safe sailing. There we have it, pretty simple. I'm not a huge fan of the way these mount because they mount like that, but I might need to read the instructions. <laughs> okay. Maybe I shouldn't have drank that so fast. So as we've gone through this video, we've talked about a couple of different parts. We've also talked about um, some different pro...